Now employing the same code design language as larger models in its range, the third generation of Mazda 2 is the most stylish and distinctive small hatchback the firm has offered UK buyers. With its sights aimed squarely at Ford's Fiesta, Renault's Clio, Skoda's new Fabia, Vauxhall's refreshed Corsa and Volkswagen's Polo, the new Mazda 2 has, typically for the firm, gone about things in a different way. Larger capacity engines particularly with petrol motors, many car manufacturers are shrinking the engine capacity and adding a turbocharger to literally boost power up to levels customers have become accustomed to. Not Mazda. Although the 1.5 litre, 104 bhp diesel in the new 2 is turbocharged, all the petrol engines, also 1.5 s, are naturally aspirated and are offered in three power outputs, 74 bhp, 89 bhp and 113 bhp. Despite the engine's relatively large capacity by contemporary small hatchback standards, performance and economy in most instances shade those of the Mazda 2's rivals, thanks to the firm's pursuit of Skyactiv technology the name given to a suite of initiatives to boost efficiency and save weight. Putting those efficiencies into context, all Mazda 2's emit 117 gkm of CO2 or less, while the least economical engine choice still has an official claim of 56.5 miles per gallon. Manual transmissions are fitted as standard, 5-speed for the lower-powered patrols. 6 speed for the 113 bhp addition and the diesel, although a lightweight 6 speed automatic can be optionally fitted to the 89 bhp petrol motor. Technology laden specification aside from the special sports launch edition, the regular Mazda 2 range will comprise of 5 trim levels, and all barring the base same model feature a 7 inch color touchscreen and MZD Connect. A function that allows you to hook up your smartphone to access various online services through the car. Upgrading the system further to include SatNav for the SLNAF and SportNAF models, while Mazda claims its new 2 is the first car in the small hatchback segment to be offered with a head-up display system designed to keep your eyes on the road. Mazda has divided the cabin into two distinct zones with a view to minimizing distractions for the driver. Although the touchscreen and rotary controller are intuitive and easy to use on the move, they are also easily reached by the front seat passenger too. Quest for refinement Mazda has gone to great lengths to enhance the new 2's refinement levels, with a range of petrol engines that are barely audible at tidal speeds. Great care has been taken to minimize all kinds of exterior noise from entering the cabin, the sense of calm amplified by the comfortiest suspension. Everything feels well assembled and robust inside the 2's cabin, although those who favor soft touch plastics will be hard pressed to find any. It's a spacious cabin too, only available with 5 door bodywork. Although access to the less room if Hanoveridge boot space is compromised by a high loading lip and narrowing aperture. Does the newcomer have what it takes to shake up the small hatchback segment? Read Parker's full new Mazda 2 review to find out. Performance Currently there are no plans for a Mazda 2 performance halo model meaning the initial range of 1.5 litre petrol and diesels with a maximum output of 113 bhp is as sporty as it gets. Trio of petrol engines as most small cars cover shorter distances, it makes sense that the majority of Mazda 2 customers will opt for a petrol power plant. There are three available, or, more accurately, one with three different power outputs. All petrol 2s feature 1.5-litre naturally aspirated non-turbocharged four-cylinder engines, which are uncannily smooth and quiet, particularly at lower speeds. Serving as the range's entry point is a 74 bhp version producing 135 newton meters of torque at a relatively high 3,800 revolutions per minute. If you really venture outside the urban confines of a city, this motor's adept at the job of keeping up with traffic without much oral drama. 
on the odd occasion you might want to take it further, be prepared for much towing and throwing of the slick 5-speed manual gear lever, as you'll need to swap ratios frequently to make the most of what power it's got on offer. It gets coarser too as the speed increases, or when you need to pull out of a junction with a greater degree of pace. The trade-off of the 106 miles per hour top speed and leisurely 12.1 second trundle from 062 miles per hour is a claimed 60.1 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 110 gkm. Mazda expects the 89 bhp version, again with the 5-speed manual box, to be the most popular choice of the range and it's easy to see why. Not only does it extra 15 bhp, joined by an increase in torque to 148 newton meters, liberate more performance 114 miles per hour top speed and 062 miles per hour in 9.4 seconds, efficiency is boosted too, with figures that beat the lowest powered model. Official claims of 62.8 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 105 gkm make this the most frugal of the petrol versions. It's nevertheless worth noting that despite the raised torque figure, that peak rate is delivered at 4000 revolutions per minute. Floor the throttle in fifth gear at motorway speeds and acceleration rate is glacial. Much gear changing is still required. Spend most of the time driving away from urban confines and the 113 bhp version makes more sense, although it's only available in the range topping sport NAF version. Peak torque remains the same as the 89 bhp engine but with a 6-speed manual gearbox you've more chance of extracting performance without changing ratios quite as much. Top speed is 124 miles per hour while the 062 miles per hour sprint time is dispatched in 8.7 seconds. Efficiency takes a bit of a knock with claimed fuel consumption dropping to 56.5 miles per gallon, emissions rising to 117 gkm. Automatic option if all that gear changing sounds tiresome. Mazda offers the two with an Alnu 6 speed automatic transmission, exclusively paired to the 89 bhp petrol engine. We've yet to drive this combination but as it's a real automatic, rather than an automated manual, we expect it to be impressively smooth in operation, ideal for diluting the drudgery of stop-start city driving. Performance and economy are both sapped thanks to the automatic's installation. A 110 miles per hour top speed is accompanied by a 12 second 062 miles per hour acceleration time. Mazda claims official figures of 58.9 miles per gallon and 112 gkm of CO22. Sole diesel offering turbocharging is part of the 1.5 litre diesel's arsenal, ensuring this Mazda 2 doesn't sacrifice too much performance in its economy quest. With 104 bhp on tap and 220 newton meters of torque, albeit produced at a still of the 3,200 revolutions per minute, there'll be less need to work the six-speed manual gearbox as you approach its 111 miles per hour top speed, or go from standstill to 62 miles per hour in 10.1 seconds. Running costs are where the diesel really scores, though. Mazda claiming an average fuel consumption of 83.1 miles per gallon while it's the only sub 100 gkm2 in the range at 89 gkm of CO2. Handling, as comfortable and competent as the Mazda 2 handling characteristics are, they don't deliver much in the way of thrills. Rather than showcasing the agility afforded by the weight saving efficiency measures. Mazda's instead chosen to maximize the two's refinement and sense of being in a bigger car, both to driver and passengers. This is no bad thing and largely this brief's been successfully undertaken. Ride quality is good both at slower, urban speeds and going faster along motorways, with good body control ensuring it doesn't porpoise after a series of undulations. The two corners accurately too. The grippy tires holding on well until gently pushing wider in faster bends when too much speed nudges it into understeer. Body roll is kept neatly in check, 
including during rapid changes of direction, allowing the Mazda to feel stable and assured. While you're confident the Mazda is going to head in the direction you're pointing it at, it's more of a seat off the pants feel rather than a steering wheel acting as a conduit for communications from the road. In fact, holding the rim delivers very little sensation at all. Steering feel aside, it and the two's other controls feel suitably weighted, erring on the lighter side to promote ease of use in city environments. The 5 speed manual gearbox was slick in its operation, useful given how often you'll use to it extract performance from the Mazda, although the 6 speed version was slightly less satisfying in its action. If out and out driving fun is a key buying factor for you, the Mazda 2 is still in the Ford Fiesta's shade. Equipment From its spring 2015 launch, the Mazda 2 came in five standard trim levels of say, Sil, Silnaf, Sport and Sportnaf, in addition to the limited availability sports launch edition. Standard Mazda 2 equipment kicking off the Mazda 2 hierarchy is the say trim level. It comes with electrically adjustable door mirrors, a rear roof spoiler, a height adjustable driver's seat complemented by a steering wheel adjustable for reach and angle, trip computer, AM FM radio with CD player and USB and auxing connections, steering wheel mounted audio controls, remote central locking, electric front windows, aircon, stop start function, hill hill function and tire pressure monitors. Progressing up notch to saw adds 15 inch alloy wheels, front fog lights, electrically folding and heated door mirrors, a leather covering for the steering wheel and gear knob, 60 hours 40 minutes split rear seats, Bluetooth connectivity, electric rear windows, cruise control and a speed limiter. Choose the 89 bhp version of the solo hire and you'll also add the 7 inch color touchscreen with multimedia commander rotary controller and MZD connect for app access, DAB radio, lane departure warning system and emergency city braking. There's little surprise that opting for the Solnaf adds a satnaf function to the 7 inch touchscreen. Satisfying your more athletic side is the sport trim. To the Sol's equipment range it adds 16-inch alloy wheels, rear privacy glass, automatic headlights and wipers, rear parking sensors, a pair of additional speakers for the sound system, climate control aircon and keyless entry. As with the Sol trim, Sport NAF comes with Sat NAF as part of the package, while the 113 bhp edition of the Sport NAF also comes with LED headlamps and day running lights. For a limited period of availability at the start of the Mazda 2's life cycle, the range also included the Sports Launch Edition. It boosts the SAIS equipment list by adding 16-inch alloy wheels, rear privacy glass, automatic headlights and wipers, rear parking sensors, the 7-inch touchscreen with multimedia controller and integrated satnav. Optional Mazda 2 accessories due to the Mazda 2's comprehensive range of equipment, factory fitted options are rather thin on the ground in terms of choice. As with many of the 2's contemporaries, only one paint finish, Arctic White, is available as standard, the 5 metallic, mica and pearlescent finishes are all optional. Sport and Sport NAF models are also available with a striking two-tone cream and black leather interior option, including a contrast panel of padded leather across the dashboard. Other extras, such as a choice of alloy wheel designs, sporty metal pedals for the accelerator, brake and clutch and additional interior lighting are available as dealer fit accessories from Mazda retailers. Comfort by stretching the car's wheelbase by 80 mm and moving the cabin rearwards by the same amount, the additional interior space has been a welcome boost to Mazda 2 comfort levels. There's room for four 6-foot adults to sit comfortably, although the rear seat would be best accommodated by three children who've outgrown their car seats. Talking of which, there are two isofix mounting points should you need them. On the road and the two's a calm car to travel, the interior's free of niggling squeaks and rattles, 
while noise from tires and air rushing over the door mirrors and around the windscreen pillars is kept impressively low too. Even the petrol engines are remarkably quiet when idling, so much so you'll find yourself gently dabbing the accelerator to check its running. Mazda shrunk its larger car underpinning philosophy to make the two paying particular attention to where occupants' feet rest and seats are mounted to ensure vibrations at those points sack up to a minimum too. There's a decent amount of adjustment in the front seats, which remain feeling comfortable after several hours at the wheel. Combine all these factors with the supple yet well-controlled suspension and damper settings and a raft of standard equipment including online connectivity on 89 bhp cell models onwards, and the Mazda 2 is an easy car to travel long distances in. Practicality, while there are many strings to its bow, Mazda 2 practicality isn't an area where it particularly shines when compared to its main rivals. Key ingredients are the, such as a five-door body and a spacious passenger cabin but others in the class make carrying larger, bulkier items easier than the Mazda does. Seats up in the two provides 280 litres of boot space, the same as VW's Polo, although that car's already been on sale for six years. In fact, the Mazda's trumped by the Corsa 285 litres. Fiesta 290, Clio 300 and the latest Fabio 330. Fold the rear seat over, the 60 hours 40 minutes split is fitted to the sole trim level upwards, and that capacity extends to a maximum of 950 litres, a figure again bested by those key rivals, with the Fabio again coming out on top at 1150 litres. Once you get your items into the Mazda's boot it's well shaped with a 1000mm gap between the wheel arches, useful for wider items. Less helpful is the 738mm height from the ground of the boot entrance and the narrow entry point where the curve of the tailgate cuts into the bumper. Form over outright function here. Elsewhere in the cabin there's a good amount of space for odds and ends, with sensibly sized door bins large enough to carry an alley to bottles, with other little cubbies for storing odds and ends located about the cabin, including a smartphone size area next to the 12 volt socket. Again, not class leading but it's sufficient. Safety, yet to be verified by the crash testing experts at Euroncap, we nevertheless expect Mazda 2 safety levels to be very good. Not only is the 2's structure one of inherent strength, with predetermined crumple zones to absorb the brunt of impacts, occupants are further protected by the standard fitment of anti-lock brakes, stability software and sex airbags. Two isofix child seat mounting points are fitted to the outer rear seat positions. Additionally, the two benefits from the availability of a number of preventative safety systems, including a blind spot warning function. Making its debut on a European market Mazda, warning of cars approaching from behind that you may not have noticed in your mirrors. Based on the same hardware is rear cross traffic alert, warning you of approaching traffic when you reverse out of a poorly sighted parking space. Elsewhere the smart city brake support system provides emergency braking at lower urban speeds to negate, or at least minimize, crashes while Mazda's also made its lane departure warning system available on the two for the first time. An improved version of the automatic high beam lights is also available on the Mazda 2, a feature made all the more illuminating when equipped with full LED headlights. Reliability, while its three-year warranty is the norm in the small hatchback segment, we expect Mazda 2 reliability to prove itself over the course of long-term ownership. Much of the sky active thinking and mechanical componentry have already seen service in Mazda's other model with no significant issues, so the case should still be the same on the smaller two. Build quality on the models tested felt robust, with no worryingly feeble interior plastics, controls or buttons. Interior trims are likely to be able to withstand regular use too, including ferrying about kids and their collective paraphernalia.
Yeah.